I still remember it. I was in Dallas, and it was like five o'clock in the morning. I said, you know what, I'm gonna go back to McKinney. I'm going to my parents' house, and they're still asleep. So I go in, and the next thing I know is the house is just filled with, with FBI agents. The chief of police, he told my father, well, Joe, tell Jason bye, because you're never gonna see him again. He was almost right. It took 18 years. If you're in prison for life without parole, the chances of them coming out is that it's not gonna happen. But it can happen. And I think that's what people see. When they see me, they see hope. When they see crack open the door, they see these are real people. These are not numbers. All right, if y'all can, turn your phones off. No, I'm just messing around. When I was in prison, I had always thought about, I can't wait to say that one day. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry about it. 2013, I got an order from the President of the United States commuting my sentence of life without parole. But I didn't want to stop there because I knew there was great people in prison that were serving sentences just like me, people who were just as worthy as me. When we were starting crackopenthedoor.com, there was nobody fighting for people serving life without parole. People have to put a face to these statistics. And that's what we try to do. We help other grassroots organizations connect to other inmates, to other people's families. And I give them my petition to say, hey, look, here is a second chance. I was one of them individuals. I thought that I was, like I said, I was supposed to sell drugs. I was destroying my city, the people I love, my family. This was the first spot in 1992 where we started trapping and selling weed. The first time I came in contact with marijuana was from my older brother, JJ. I found some one day at the house. Started giving it to my parents. I hid it. I wanted to be like my brother so much. I would drive with him in his car and I would watch him and I would mimic him. And when he ended up going to jail, he kind of just like fell in my lap right there. Here I was 16 years old. I had a connection to get the drugs from. I knew everybody to sell it to. I had money put up to get it. I had just went all the way in. Maybe 20 kilos, probably few. Today, there's not a corner of this country that hasn't felt the effects of the crack epidemic. Crack really didn't kind of hit McKinney until 93, 94 and it kind of hit real hard. My mind was just so lost at that time. I thought I was actually born to sell drugs. It was just like, whatever happens, happens. And the worst thing happened. <laughs> I was charged with 14 counts of drug trafficking. Ultimately, I was sentenced to life without parole, and I was a first time nonviolent offender. Mandatory minimums, I had never heard of the word. I didn't kill nobody, nobody overdosed, but because I had crack cocaine, they ended up giving me life. There is a serious problem with this war on drugs. The federal population has increased by 75% drug offenders. Minorities make up 60 to 70% of federal inmates across the United States. I just thought, hey, this is what we do. It didn't dawn on me how far I had slipped into this prison life until my brother, when my brother got murdered. My brother wasn't born to go to prison and die in there. That's where I said, you know what? He's not gonna die in vain. Not only was I gonna overcome, but that I was gonna change hundreds of lives. <laughs> Welcome home. That's what's up. Yeah. Appreciate it. It's gonna take a social movement. Locking up people for life without parole isn't working. I mean, he seems like he has what it takes to put one together. There's no standard blueprint. you got to get the families involved. Did you write a support letter on yeah. behalf of your brother? Oh, yeah, on my city letterhead and everything. Capel, I was the mayor. This is my brother, been serving 15 years. Got life plus 30. These stories don't get out unless people like us bring them out. <laughs> Who better to bring them out than somebody that was incarcerated? We're not advocating for everybody to come home, but that door should at least be open for those first-time offenders. 
It's what keeps me going every day. It's what makes me fight. I don't want to forget what it felt like waking up every day thinking, is this it? Am I going to die here? We'll meet again. I'll see him again one of these days. You know, I'm free now. I'm free. And I know he can see me up there. Love you, bro.